a Hayden 3647 fan control, okay? And this thing gives you all the information right here on the back of it. It's got a straight to battery, straight to ground. We have a switched ignition and the orange fan position one and blue fan position two and green goes to the AC clutch. So the only one that we're going to use on this is just fan position one. We're not going to use the AC clutch or any of that other business. Now on this particular vehicle, which is a 1984 or 83-84 is about the same Toyota truck, uh, I'm not using the heater circuit that heats the, uh, the bottom of the carburetor, so I just borrowed that circuit right here with the I uh, spliced my wire in there and got me a, a switched 12 volts that comes on when the key's on. So that's what I did. That's how I got my 12 volts. But really all you need to do is find a 12 volt source. Now I've got some old uh, radiator uh, fan out of some old junk wreck car somewhere. I don't remember what car it came off of. A Ford probably. And it's a multi-speed fan but I only use one speed, the medium speed. And it does just fine for this little 22R motor. So, the problem that we're having is this old controller, which has probably been on here for about five years. Uh, sometimes it'll work, sometimes it won't. You come out and tap on it and it starts working. So I warranted it out and got another one. And uh, I've already done all the wiring many years ago, so I don't need to mess with that. I'm just gonna cut it, splice it right in right here splice that sucker in and be done with it. Whenever I do wiring and stuff like this, I like my ideal, it's, it's called an ideal strip master. And, uh, and this thing works really good. Okay. And if you ding those, this blade all up, which it's got a few dings in it, but it still works good. Ding it all up, you can get a new one. But I've been using this thing for a long, long time. Works good. Ordered me a little terminal kit off of eBay. This is all 3M uh, waterproof heat shrink crimps. And that's what I'm going to be using on all this. This is just a nice little kit to have. If you go digging around on eBay, find one that says, you know, Made in USA 3M. Each one, if you spin it around, you know, it'll have a part number on it and all that. And it'll tell you the size, which I don't even think this one will zoom in. And for some reason, there we go. It's, it's zooming in out anyway, so that's the range. 18 to 22 all wire gauge. Most of them have some kind of deal like that on there somewhere. Uh, if you get some of the cheaper stuff... Like here's a package for one of them. I mean, they're all they're all pretty nice little terminals, so that's kind of how I do that. I have some plain steel ones there too, just some barrels that I do with some really small wires. So, uh, you know, having a nice uh, kit like that's a good idea. And then I I uh, take mine and I wrap it. I've got some lacing tape here. This particular stuff is Nomax. It's really tricked out. It's really not necessary for this situation, but that's just what I have. You know, you use what you've got. And I've got some uh, electrical tape, just some regular old 3M electrical tape. So let's get this thing going on, on the road here. Now, when you do this, you want to strip it back nicely. You don't want to twist those wires. You want them to be straight, okay? And then you put the crimp tool on there. And you want to put it in about the middle of where you're, the area that you have that's allowable. Okay. I've got it in the middle there. You can see there's a small little indention that's going to stop the wire. And then the end of the crimp barrel to the right of it a little bit there. I've got a nice little, oh, probably three sixteenths of an inch maybe or so on the, on the right. So it's kind of in the middle. It may not be perfect, but it's close. Now, technically, you are not supposed to twist wires before you crimp them. Now, the soft copper wires will lay on top of each other and, and break each other off. And so we don't want to do that. 
we want to crimp it. And whenever I crimp it, as you can see here, I crimp the same on the same side. So this particular crimp tool, it has an anvil that goes in and, and dents it. I do it on the same side. That's just how I like to do it. It does deform the terminal a little bit. That's okay, it don't bother me. I just like to do a repeatable procedure so that it, you know it looks uh, it looks good each time. So let's get this thing together and get going here. All right, so I got them all crimped, and as you can see, if you look at the wire there, you'll see just a tiny bit of wire sticking out. Okay, that's how it's supposed to be. You're not supposed to get that shield. The insulation of the wire is not supposed to be wound up in that in the barrel of that crimp okay it's supposed to have a little bit of space there okay that's what it's supposed to look like so I've got them all crimped together everybody's happy I'm gonna put some tape I'm gonna heat shrink it first tape it up put some uh, some binding tape on there some because you know just regular old uh, electrical tape this stuff here you can see that I've, I've put little ties on there just regular electrical tape it'll just fall off after a while, just start unwrapping just like this and fall off. So I'm going to tape this little guy up. And then on the other end, we have the small little heat terminal. What I do is I put a little glob of silicone on that and stick it in between the fins and the radiator. Just, just right in there. I don't think y'all can see that, but there we go. This is a really old car, so probably the original radiator. One of those spots there, I don't remember where. I've got a spot. I'll just shove it in there with some silicone to hold it from vibrating. And that's it. Alright, I'm going to show this heat gun just a little bit. It's really hard to do. But when, you, when it starts flowing out, you'll see it. And you'll see the glue in there spread out. And it gets kind of semi-translucent. And you just got to keep that heat gun moving around. And if you overheat it, it'll split. Okay, so you can see now everything is all shrunk and the wire bubbles up a little bit some of these cheap wires but you'll see that the glue kind of comes out a little bit you'll see on the ends the glue fills it up a little bit all right and that's what you want okay you want it to come out a little bit waterproof connection looks good everybody's happy okay might need to heat maybe one or two of them up a little more but just keep track of it because see these cheap wires they just start bubbling and getting fried they're not rated for high temperature and they're not rated for 400 degrees or whatever it takes to to shrink that stuff so let me check that out and get her taped up all right well i've got this thing sitting here and i'm going to lace up one and i kind of wanted to show the process of doing this it's kind of hard to do because i don't have a cell phone holder <laughs> maybe i need to get one right let me uh get this let me get this lacing tape started here and I'm gonna do it while I'm watching this thing and you just go around once and and what I do is is I, I grab it all right so I go around once I stick it through and I put my I grab this piece here okay I grab it like this Go around one more time. Let's see if I can get this around and yeah, everybody can see it oh, without knocking things over. So, grab that. All right, and that loop that I held right here, just put it through. And sorry if anybody can't figure this out. Sorry about that, but that's how it is. And so then you turn it, turn it like that. And you let those, let them strings lay down like that. Pull them tight. All right. And what that's supposed to do is it's going to hold itself. See? Put a little tension on there and it holds itself. And it's the beginning of a square knot. So you can top it with a just another square like that. And I always double it because, I don't know, I'm weird. I like doubling it. So there you are. How about that? I wonder if I can do it right. Get my 
string all mixed around. There we go. There. Mm. And this is just some Nomex lacing tape that I got off of eBay. It's some mil spec, just industrial uh, leftover stuff. But that's what it looks like when you do a lacing knot there. That's what it's called. All right, so that's kind of what things look like. Now, I went through a little bit more trouble and went ahead and, and spaced them a little better and, and put, a, put them all on there like that because in, in an industrial setting, that's how you'll see it. You'll see the knots all on the same side. They'll all be spaced a certain spacing that's required by specifications for whatever you're putting together. You're putting together a patch panel or a cabinet for something or a fighter jet or helicopter or whatever. All these things are going to be inspected by someone after you do the work to check it off. Okay? Another thing they use is uh, some stuff called Glipdol. Okay? And they'll get a Glipdol, a little bit of Glipdol, and put a dot of Glipdol on each one of these knots. And on the end of these uh, cuts here, so that it'll soak up in there and, and it won't fray and it won't come apart. I'm not going to put Glyptol on any of this stuff, but Glyptol is really nice. It's red. It's the high temperature epoxy type sealant stuff. It's it's pretty cool, and they use it on all kinds of stuff. This is this one of the applications that just kind of bleeds over into uh, to hold these knots. So uh, it just depends on if the specifications require that. So. That's, that's about it. I'm just going to bolt this thing down where it was, put my fuses back in, and, uh, and call it good. Take it easy.